Welcome back everyone to another episode from Ampro Engineering. What we have here displayed on screen is probably one of my favorite vehicles. This is my King Blackfoot that I have owned since brand new. In fact, the body on this truck I've owned since before it was new. When this truck came out, I really wanted the body, so I bought it and mounted it on my Monster Beetle. So there are some patched holes on this body from many, many years back. And then I got the King Blackfoot, and uh, well, it's it's been like this ever since. You may not have realized it's a King Blackfoot because it's the only King Blackfoot on the planet that isn't painted in box art. I know, I know. There's like two other ones. <laughs> anyway. Let's move forward here. I've got a really cool modification that I wanted to show. It's one that I made when I was a kid, and recently I've done it up a little bit, uh, a little bit better, a little bit cleaner, and I wanted to show everyone. The King Blackfoot has a unique tailgate where the taillights and the tailgate are the same piece. So it's very easy to chop them off and add these. What we're looking at here is a taillight bucket that you install this translucent acrylic piece here directly onto it like so and this will give you three options for lighting you've got a three millimeter LED port at the top five millimeter at the middle and three millimeter at the base it's hard to see because this is in black but you can see that they are each separated by a wall so that they don't, the colors really don't bleed. It's a little bit hard to see this because it's paint, it's, uh, it's not painted yet, but there are some details on it that hark back to the actual truck. Uh, the full size truck has a reflector in this area here that is embossed. So that's what this little rectangular component is. And of these two, and they're very hard to see, there's like a weird gradient that appears in, like when you look at it, but comically you don't feel it. So when we paint it, you won't see it anymore. But there are two depressions, one here and one there, for diagonally placed screws, again, on the real truck. On the left, we see that I have one installed. In fact, what you're looking at here are my original prototypes, which I really didn't care for the paint job on. Uh, I'll show you how I'm gonna paint them shortly. But I felt that everybody else gets my good stuff and I'm always stuck with the prototypes. So I said, enough's enough. I'm actually gonna print out some good stuff for me as well. You can see that the top portion of the light and the bottom portion of the light are not illuminated. It's simply the center section here. And I know it looks yellow. It is red, it's just the, uh, the camera doing this. Um, it will allow you to maybe put a, a driving light and a brake light, uh, reverse light down here. These are typically all red lights for this style of Ford truck, but that shouldn't stop you from wanting to install a turn signal on top or something of that nature. On the right, I've already placed, this is just already installed here on the truck. I'm going to shut the lights off. Now what you're looking at is the production uh, bucket. These here, you see that they are black. These are some prototypes. This is a very, very hard, brittle material, so I typically do not offer these for sale. I don't want anybody to buy these and have them break. And normally, these are the SLS, the Selective Laser Centered Nylon Units, which are very, very forgiving, very durable. I also mentioned that the top is a three millimeter. Um, I've designed these in such a way so that if you do want to put a larger LED in, in this case here, I did put a five millimeter LED for a brake light. Uh, it is possible to do very, very easily. So you, you can simply drill this out to a five millimeter and you know be able to put a larger LED in there. When you install this piece here, in fact, this is the correct, the, uh, correct orientation, a little hard to see again, but there's a little rectangular boss on the inside, which would go right, oops, right, uh, there we go, right there. Um, these are super easy to install because as I mentioned before, the tailgate on these trucks incorporate the, the, um, taillight here. So when you remove the taillight, simply run a razor blade along this leading edge right here a couple of times, not too hard. And then this should just snap right off and it will leave you a perfect hole. I did want to mention that when you install these, you use a very good model glue and apply glue in the regions inside these little bosses here. 
as well a very uh, as a light bead around the entire thing to prevent it from falling out. I must urge you not to use super glue as this will fog the inside of the light and become very very noticeable when the vehicle uh, when the, the glue is dried and the paint is dried. So no super glue, just use a high quality model glue. I always get the questions on what paint do I use? It's not the right one, but I'll show you right now anyway, and I'll give it a light coat of paint. I have my reverse light portion on my taillights masked off so that I don't uh, paint those red as well. I also wanted to point out that since we're doing a translucent paint on these, that if you leave these black, uh, it could darken the appearance of it, but that might be something that you like is it maybe it's a kind of a, a smoked tail light you're looking for that might work. Normally I would recommend painting these silver. Uh, in fact, on the nylon pieces, which are the production ones, they come white, red, or black. It is my recommendation that regardless, I would just buy the black ones, paint them black, a couple of coats, then paint the insides of the bucket silver and you will get no light bleed. I would recommend that, but again, you know, you're welcome to uh, customize them as you like, because that's how they, you know, will get that personalized appearance. I also wanted to point out that these look super yellow. They're not, they're like a milky white. I don't know why the camera's doing that right now, uh, but nevertheless, this is the paint that I use. This is absolutely not the right color. This is called metallic red. It's 1152 from Testers. And if you, it's hard to see, but on the bottom, it's a little bit dark here. That's where the metallic flakes are. I just don't, um, I don't mix it. And what ends up happening is you get this really nice translucent red on the top. So this is what I use. Um, I've had the best luck with this stuff, but they don't actually make a signal red, at least not one that I can find. Uh, if somebody else has a, a better option, I would love to hear about it. They do have a turn signal option for the front, but just not for the, you know, for the ambers, but not for the red. Anyway, so in the meantime, this is what I'm going to use here. And we'll just do one light coat. And you want to go light because if you go a little too heavy, I think you can see it there nicely. You don't want to uh, kind of hide all of the details that have been placed in there. You also may notice when you get these um, that there may be a little bit of texture on the surface. If you don't like that texture, I certainly don't. Uh, just a very light sanding with a 600 grit sandpaper, maybe in some water. Very, very light because this ultra detailed plastic sands really quickly, really cleanly, and you'll get a nice finish out of it here. So I've got these both painted up here. Uh, this Testers paint really, it, it's weird because when it's drying, you can see on this and I've kind of positioned the light as best I can here. When it's drying, it looks like crap in some cases. It does lay down really smooth and the overall finish when it's complete is quite nice. So if you do have access to this Testers metallic red that I'm using, I, I do recommend it. If you know a better option, hey, there's a comments area right there. Please let me know what that is. I'd love to try it. I do want to show you now, since these guys are, are drawing here, I'll show you how the reverse light looks in the taillight bucket as well. I'll do my best to illustrate uh, you know, how these taillights look as best as I can. I have decided to use the top area as a, you know, as a driving light, so you can see it glows red here. However, when you apply the brakes, and I'm simply just doing this on the remote right now, the taillight does get much brighter. And of course, it's emitting this massive glow, which I must say looks very neat on camera. But the the red is, uh, the, the light anyway, is really staying concentrated in this area here. Now, when you go into reverse, and you have to forgive me, but this truck doesn't actually have reverse. So I'm just gonna stuff this three millimeter LED in there. So I've placed the three millimeter LED in there, and with the driving light on, the brake light on, let's apply the reverse light. Go ahead and shut the parking light off, or I'm sorry, the brake light off. Boy, this does not show well at all, does it? You are getting a little tiny bit of illumination right here, uh, but boy, it looks not nearly as good as it does over here. Let me see if I can turn the light on. Maybe that's kind of the saturation screwing it up. Nope. Not much better, I guess. 
That's just not too... Oh boy, it does look kind of weird like that. Anyway, you have to take my word for that. But I think it looks quite good. Hit the brake again. There you go. Well, everyone, I hope you liked that quick and easy upgrade to the Tamiya King Blackfoot. This will also work on the Blackfoot Extreme body since they are pretty much the same. Does anybody want to see some coming up soon? I, I think you guys might. Let's, let's take a look and see what I've got here. I won't show too much of this one here, but upon first inspection, this looks like a Super Champ. But it is not a Super Champ at all. It is, was, kind of used to be a Hornet and a Super Champ, and a many things. So this is, um, there's, trust me, there's a reason why this exists. Project Fast Attack Vehicle. We can see that we have Operational. Focus. There we are. Operational front lights now. This is a solid bucket with a clear lens with the little Marshall cat in it. These are also used along the top for our light bar. And since I've always felt that the fast attack vehicle needed a roof, I went ahead and made a roof and then decided, you know what, it also needs a ridiculous wing at the end. The taillights, you can see, here's one without the lens. These are also operational taillights. These are not the exact same version as the stock ones with the uh, center bar for military purposes. These are just doom buggy tail lights that I decided to make. If anybody's curious, I did not design this engine. This engine is available on Shapeways. It is missing, where is it? There it is. It's missing its stinger right here. You can purchase that on Shapeways from Knight Customs. That's one of their designs for the uh, fast attack vehicle as well as Wild One. So I've got all these goodies pretty much squared away. I've got to do a little bit more work before I make them available to you. You know, I do try and do my best to make sure you are going to get some nice solid pieces. Uh, what else? Is that all I want to show you? Okay, last thing. It's not really a project because all of this stuff's available, but I've decided to turn my metallic special hornet into a clear metallic special hornet. So these are all of my Ampro parts. I've got the rear lower mount for the Hornet, not the Super Hornet. I've got some adapter uh, sh shock mount bases for the Hornet shocks, adjustable Hornet shock collars. This is my wing mount modified since I'm not gonna chop out the wing on the chrome metallic Hornet. I've gone ahead and just cleared some of these or printed some of these uh, stock Tamiya parts here. Here's my transmission brace, my battery door, front suspension, front bumper, the uprights, shock bases, shock adapters for the O-ring, the brace here, the body mount. Uh, you know, some of these are Tamiya pieces, some of these are my pieces. I just decided that I really wanted to have something cool. Oh, oh, hang on, what am I, what am I doing here? The rim. I don't know that I like it in clear because it almost looks chrome and the metallic black, I'm sorry, the, yeah, actually, yeah, it is the metallic black Hornet has the black wheels, which I think are part of the look. So I don't know if I like those too much yet. You might be wondering, how can you get them? Well, you already can. They are available on Shapeways. Unfortunately, this is the ultra detail plastic, or in some cases, the clear acrylic. Problem one is the cost. You're looking between four and five times the amount for this material. Number two, the durability. This stuff has the same structural integrity as a sugar cube. They are super, super brittle. So although it does have electronics, I do plan on driving this around a tad. Uh, you need to know that this stuff is, is purely cosmetic and I'm doing this just because I think it'd be cool or insane. I don't know, you decide. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. As you know, I've got a lot more coming up. I'm working on Project Superfly V3 right now, which is driving me insane. So that's always interesting. 
You can add me on Instagram and Facebook at Ampro Engineering. And before you go, please check out the band Blue Pinto. They are the folks that allow me to use their songs on my videos. You can find their Facebook page at the end of the video. Thank you again, and we will see you next time.